I quickly found myself in a pit, in a hole, crying out for help, for anybody to come save me. And these are the people that came to help. Atheist. Why do you cry out for help? There is no one to hear your cries. You are alone just as I am alone. So I asked, if there is no God, how can we even be aware of the concept of God? Agnostic. The one who has made you is no longer willing to listen to your cries. So save your breath. We can't even know who he is. So I asked, why would he give me breath if it was not to speak to him? Heathenism. He said, you must make yourself an idol out of that dirt and then worship it and pray to it and ask for the spirit of the dirt to shallow out the hole and let you out. So I asked, why cannot the spirit of the dirt make itself into its own idol? Why does it need me to do it for it? Scientist. He said, have no worries. One day you will evolve and spontaneously grow wings as a bird and fly out of this hole. So I asked, how long will that take? And he told me, 100, 200 million years, 300 million years? You'll just have to wait and see how long that takes. Buddhism. The issue is you desire to get out of this hole. Once you kill the desire within yourself, then you'll no longer want to be out of the hole, and then you will be free. So I ask, how can you have a desire to not have a desire? Can creating a double negative produce anything other than conflict? Islam. You're not worthy of Allah. You must prove your worth. When you can earn your way and prove that you're worthy, then you could stand in his glorious presence. If this is so, are you saying that man can become as holy as Allah? That Allah can have an equal and it could be a man? If that is not so, then how can the lesser not be destroyed by that which is greater? If Allah can limit himself and not destroy me, why must I earn it? Does he not have any room for mercy, grace, and love for me? Judaism You have failed to keep all the customs and regulations. When you complete all the feasts and sacrifices at the temple, you will be accepted. Your sins will be forgiven, and God will then see fit to raise you out of this hole. So I asked, if I deserve to die, how can the sacrifice an animal ever pay the debt for a man? Did not God create the animal and the man? Is man not above the animal? If man is above, then his sin is much greater. Then the sacrifice for a man's sin must be a man. Jesus the Christ Then a man in a gleaming white robe came to the side of the hole, and he said, I have heard your cry, and I have been sent by Yahweh to help you. And I said, Let me guess, you are coming to tell me what I must do to get out of this hole. Then without saying a word, he took off his robe and gently folded it up and left it in a neat pile next to the side of the hole. And he lowered himself onto the edge of the hole, and with one move, jumped into the hole. So I asked, what are you doing? Now we're both going to die. And he said, I did not jump in the hole to get out. I jumped in this hole to get you out. Then I asked him, what do you mean? This hole is almost twice as tall as a man. He then turns to the wall and kneels down and tells me to climb up on top of his back and stand on his shoulders because he is going to get me out of this hole. So I say, if I get out, you're going to die in here. And he said, as soon as I was sent to you, I knew I was going to die in here, but I have come so you may have life. So please do not let my sacrifice be in vain. Kneeling back down, I crawled up on top of his back and up onto his shoulders. And with great pain and suffering, he stood up to throw me out of the hole. He told me to stand upon his hands. So I put my feet upon his hands and with one foul swoop, he threw me up out of the hole and out of certain death. So I was standing on top of the hole, I looked back down, 
and the man that once looked so regal looked in pain with blood coming down his face from his side from his back from the palms of his hands and the bottoms of his feet he was bleeding quickly I became overwhelmed for what has happened and what he did to me and I asked him are you okay and he answers me no I hurt and what I'm about to go through is very overwhelming So I asked him, is there anything I can do for you? And he said, yes, put on my robe. Go and tell everybody what I have done for you today. And anyone who receives your message, tell them to also put on my robe. And they too will have everlasting life. And that they too can be with me in paradise. And all they have to do is listen to my commands and obey me and do what I ask them to do. And I will lead them to safety every single last one of them. The gospel is often called the good news. But most people do not realize there is no good news without the bad news. Here's the bad news. We all deserve to die because of the sin nature we inherited from Adam. We all deserve to burn in hell and be eternally separated from a loving God. Knowing that we could not pay this debt and still be with him, Jesus was sent to the earth to die and pay the debt we could not pay upon the cross. As he died for our sins and was resurrected once more, to show us that we too can be resurrected and live with the Father forever in heaven. That's the good news. The bad news is we all deserve hell. The good news is through Jesus we all will receive heaven. What must be done? Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means to turn from your sins, to back away or make a 180, go the other direction, reform. We are called to reform, to repent of our sins, to stop doing those things that which put Jesus on the cross in the first place, that created the separation. It doesn't mean that we will be perfect and that we'll never sin again, but the intent of the heart is to align ourselves with the Father, to say, we will not do these things anymore. And if we do do these things, we will confess our sins and continue to walk forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the true gospel. You have been given the ability and the power to deny yourselves, to walk forward and stop doing those things which cause so much pain in your life, and that destroys all the peace that God would like to give you. The good news is that you can become a better you in the power of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit by a loving Father. He did not leave you in the hole. He did not leave you in hell. We choose to stay there by denying him and not accepting the gospel and not allowing Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. God does not have to put anyone in hell. We're already destined for it. He has come to pull us out of hell and to bring us into the kingdom of his dear son. So, what must be done? Would you like to accept Jesus Christ now as your Lord and Savior and receive the gift of eternal life, freedom from your past sins, freedom from what controls you and what's destroying your life and peace in yourself? You can have this. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins, to turn from them, to do that which you have commanded me to do, to keep the commandments of God and the walkness and the fullness of life. I accept you, Father, and I accept Jesus. Give me the Holy Spirit now so I can move forward and be truly yours. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. If you said that prayer, you are now a child of God. You might be wondering, what do I do now? Well, here's the good thing. I would recommend reading the Gospel of John. If you want some real life experiences in scripture, read the Psalms. They're very truthful and honest about life and the struggles that it means to be a Christian. It's not always easy and there's a lot to learn. But here's the thing, now you're never alone. Now you have the hope of heaven. Now you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus is leading you. Now you get to live forever. So do not give up. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Jesus is returning soon. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand.